Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. Welcome to my Houdini burn tutorial. Now we're going to continue where we left off in realistic fire tutorial. If you haven't watched that, I will leave a link in the description. Please go check that out before you get here. Also, please support me by purchasing the file. I will leave a link in the description for that. I will add this purchase file to the original realistic fire tutorial file, which means if you've already purchased it, you will get this update for free. Alright, let's jump right into it. Let's get into PyroSource. Let's create a grid. Change the size to 4x4. Four four. And the number of rows to 800 and the columns to 800 also. Uh, just to give it a little bit of definition. Um, let's add a UV texture. And we will change the attribute class to points. Nothing else to change here. And then attribute from map. I will bring in texture channel. As you can see, it's already pulled in UV color texture map. But I want to bring in um, this Houdini image, which has alpha in it. So let me just paste it here. Okay, good. Let me put in a delete node. And I'm going to delete um, points in by expression at cd.r equals zero. There you go. So you can see it's see through now, which is good. Let me put in a transform. And I want to adjust this in such a way that it's, um, let me see here. I want to bring this corner to the center. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Oops, the other way. Um, maybe minus two. Yeah. And I'm going to rotate it um, so that it stays upright. There you go. I think it's minus 90 and I will push this up so it sits on the ground plane okay good okay let me jump back into the camera and adjust this because this is obviously too close that looks somewhat better okay good And put in a poly extrude node. Set it up to go to minus 0 0.3. Um, obviously, there we go. And enable output back. Okay, good. So let's uh, clean up the geometry by putting in a fuse node just in case if it's got any points that we want to get rid of. Let's hit perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull him all the way from this out geo point. Connect it to there. Good. That's the out geo and we've got an ISO offset which is I'm gonna leave it as it is and then scatter. I'm gonna change the scatter to 50,000 points. Okay. Going to create fuel. I'm going to change the particle separation to 0 0.02. Um, nothing else to change here. <clears throat> Noise. Um, I'm going to leave them all the same. Rasterize. Um, I think I'm going to change the voxel size. I'm going to disconnect it and I'm going to change it to 0 0.005. Okay. Give it a lot more definition, basically. All right, good. That's out fuel done. Let's get back into Autodop Network and let's run this. Okay, I just ran a few frames. Check it out. As you can see, the pyro bounds have stopped going. All right, which means it's wrong. So let's adjust that first of all. Um, what I also want to do is um, increase the division size because the resolution is too high right now so it's taking longer for the simulation. 
So let me press return and adjust this. Um, maybe that should be like 12. All right, good. So the rest of the items here, I think I'm gonna leave them all the same for now and I will come back to them later, okay? Um, but let's run this for now. Okay, I just ran the sim and here's what we got. I mean, obviously it's just, it's too much. Okay, so that's fine. Let's go back into PyroSource. I'm gonna click and hold Alt and drag this out to create a copy. And I'm going to call this out geo collision. All right. And let me enable this. I'm going to collisions and click on deforming object and select this and press return. It'll create a bunch of nodes for us. Okay. There you go. It's done it. If I go back into the Autodop network, it's also created these nodes for us. Okay, perfect. Oops, did I drag that along? Okay, good. And I'm just going to merge and make sure this is mutual. Okay, good. If I look in PyroSource inside of the Autodoc network, um, I want to uncheck display geometry and go into collisions and enable collision guide. And make sure it actually shows up. If it doesn't, then you have to adjust the division size. With this method of using the forming geometry um, from the shelf tool, it actually looks at volume sample mode. And that's important because if not, usually I think it looks at ray intersect. Okay, um, it's something to know. All right, so let's, uh, okay. I wanna just disable this back up again. And let's this, uh, let's run this now. Okay, I just ran about 40 frames. As you can see, it's already starting to lose the cache, okay? But here it is. See how significantly different it looks as soon as you added that little collision geometry. Okay, good. <clears throat> so we're gonna continue and refine this now. Okay, first thing is I wanna just check something in Pyro, um, which is in resize container. So we're going to max bounds. And I don't want that. I actually want to set this to manual and copy what's in Pyro, um, that one, and paste it here as relative references for the size and the center also to be the same. Okay, good. That's fine. And I will also adjust the bounds. Um, I think the padding is fine, but I will just change it to 0.2. All right, that's good. Um, let's go into gas wind, and I want to adjust this a lot more. So minus 0 0.5 in the x direction, and I don't want too much in the y, so I'm going to change it to 0 0.1. And I think I will change the. Uh, I'll keep the wind direction in the z as the same. It's not a big deal, but I want to change the wind scale to 0.5. Uh, this is a very sensitive parameter, so if you increase it too much, then you know it'll just be too much. Okay, all right, let's check that out. Okay, I ran about 40 frames, and I lost some cache at the start, but here it is. As you can see, it's um, streaking towards that direction, which is what I want. There you go. It looks nice. All right, good. <clears throat> we're gonna move on all right I'm gonna bring it on to this side actually all right okay so um, I'm gonna add I'm gonna just uh, pull these nodes up a little bit that one um, I'm gonna add a couple of nodes here gas wind again which is the same as this one um, I'm gonna give it a further uh, let's say minus four maybe in that direction so push it further in the uh, negative x direction okay and um, i will also add a little bit of y direction and i'll leave the wind scale at one all right good <clears throat> let's add a gas turbulence node and i'll increase the grain 
to 4 and the scale to 1. Um, you know, you'll see what happens, but I'm going to put in an enable solver and I'm going to connect these two. For testing purposes, I'm going to say, right, you start at 48 and finish at, I don't know, 50 or something. So dollar capital F greater than 47 and dollar capital F less than, I don't know, 56, I guess, it doesn't matter. So you got to remember that range, okay, because we're going to adjust the temperature and fuel for that range. So, well, fuel at least, because see, fuel is what, um, it, it, well, fuel is the source of the uh, fire, okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say um, here, probably the same thing, oops, not that. Um, I'm just going to copy the enable solver uh, expression and I'm going to put that here. So, okay, good. Um, it's actually the other way around. Wait. So, if it's less than 47, uh, you'll be 1, basically. Um, after that, it's 0. Okay. So what I'm going to do here for the temperature is we don't want the temperature to go out immediately. I'm going to go to 47 frame number and alt, hold alt and click that. And let's say if we go to, I don't know, um, so that'll be 48 and maybe 72. Drop this down to zero. Okay. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, run a flipbook and I'll come back to you. Okay, the sim is now done. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so that's how it looks. Good. However, so if I scroll through this, it's going in that direction. I actually want it to go that way. Okay, so that's one change. And then if you look at it, the temperature stays in for too long, I think. Um, if I run this, see it, it stays in for a little too long, so maybe I should cut it around uh, 60. Okay, so that's that. And the flames aren't that aren't that tall. I want it to be taller. Okay, this is only um, for you know some purposes. Technically, I want to run this part here for much longer, um, and then I will. Um, do the entire thing of this disintegration of the fire later on okay not here right let's jump in and let's change these things so that's the first one so this should be in the positive x direction and um, this gas wind here I want to increase the wind direction in the y a little bit so that we can get taller flames and then um, in here the temperature if I shift and middle click I can see what's happening here um, I will select the second point and bring this down to 60 all right there you go so that way oops all right good all right I'm gonna run that now um, and I'll come back to you. Okay, the sim is now done. Let's have a look at it. Okay, that looks much better. Uh, we've got taller flames. Um, however, if you look at it, it's actually clipping here. Okay, so we obviously need to increase the resize container. So that's one. And number two is that I think it's too much of fire. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit and I'm also going to adjust the uh, turbulence because I don't like the smaller swirls. Okay, so let's uh, fix those things now. <clears throat> Resize container. Uh, I'm going to change it to like, I don't know, 0.4 or whatever. Okay, so that is fine. And in here, they're all the same. That's okay. In here, I want to change the swirl size to 2. 
Okay, that's looking good. That's looking good. Um, enable solver. It's time to change it to the actual uh, frames that I want. 190 to 194. So yeah, that's that's pretty good. And I'm going to change these two here. Um, and this one, I'm going to delete it as well. This will be one up to 190. I'm going to disable the sim. Go to 190. Where is it? Yeah, 190. I'm going to say at this point, you're one. And two frames later, this is going to be zero. Actually, um, I was saying that I want to reduce the fuel. I want to change it to 0.8 instead of 1. So it'll be 0.8 all the way through. And then at 192, it goes to 0. At that exact 192, I'm just going to delete this and reset it. Right, at that point at 192, temperature will be 1. And um, this is a 24 frame uh, sim. So at 204, which is 12 frames later, half a second, I want to drop this temperature down to zero. Okay. So I think that should be pretty good. And that aligns with 190 to with this one here. So if I look at that. So that's sitting at 190. Okay, that's good. So that's when this gets enabled. Okay. All right. Good. Okay, I went ahead and cached the file. Here's the result. Okay, all right, so um, I cached, I also rendered the file only after which I realized something. So if I go into transform here, this part is in this corner and that's Originally, it was like this, and this is not how Houdini logo is. So I had to transform it to 180 degrees and re-sim and re-render. Okay, I'm going to show, uh, basically, um, I used exactly the same settings um, for the ROP network and the material as well. Everything is the same as per the realistic fire. Um, tutorial. So I went ahead and did a render and I'll show you that now. Okay. All right, that looks pretty cool. Okay, so um, then what I did was I um, <clears throat> enabled the grid in the background and adjusted it so that I can set it up, you know, to um, fill the camera. So maybe I should just show you that here. There you go. And right, good. And um, I also added the light dome, enabled the light dome. And then I did another render and I'll show you that now. Okay. All right, that is pretty cool. So that's the end of the tutorial. So obviously I didn't change anything with regards to the material material or um, the output itself, you know? So um, uh, when you watch Realistic Fire tutorial, uh, you'll know the settings for those. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you liked it and I hope it is useful. Um, if you liked it, please, um, give me a thumbs up, share, comment, and please subscribe also. And do not forget to click on the bell icon for notifications. Thank you. Have a great day.